Hello, my name is Travis Monk. This is one of a series of videos pertaining to cell respiration and photosynthesis. This video will provide some details on the different stages of cell respiration, glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain, as well as where they take place, their reactants, and their products. The picture on this slide shows much of what will be described throughout the rest of this video. Glycolysis is the first step in cellular respiration, both aerobic and anaerobic respiration. As described in the first slide, there are three pieces of information about each process that are important. Where it takes place, what it uses, and what it produces. Since all organisms do glycolysis, it needs to take place in a location that all organisms possess. The cytoplasm or the cytosol. As you can see in the picture provided on this slide, the process is quite complex. What generally happens, however, is that a glucose molecule is broken into half into two pyruvate molecules. Energy is released when these bonds and glucose are broken. That energy is used to turn 2 ADP, adenosine diphosphate, into 2 ATP, adenosine triphosphate. What happens is that a phosphate group is added to ADP to produce a high energy molecule that's used to fuel all cell processes. In addition, NAD is used to produce NADH, which can be used later in cell respiration to produce even more ATP. This will be explained later on the slide discussing the electron transport chain. After glycolysis, two different things can happen in the cell. If oxygen is not present, fermentation or anaerobic respiration occurs. The point of fermentation is to recycle NAD+, as shown in this diagram. Lactic acid or alcohol are produced as a byproduct of fermentation. Alternatively, and the focus of this video, is what happens when oxygen is present. What happened next, in this circumstance, is that pyruvate is converted to acetyl coenzyme A, or acetyl CoA. The formation of acetyl CoA, or acetyl coenzyme A, is the next step. This process occurs in mitochondria, within the matrix. As a refresher, the matrix in mitochondria is the fluid component that surrounds all the other structures. In this process, two pyruvate molecules, each of which is essentially half of a glucose molecule that was produced during glycolysis, is broken down further into a product called acetyl coenzyme A and carbon dioxide gas. In this process, energy from further decomposition is used to convert two NAD plus molecules into NADH. As described in the section on glycolysis, this molecule will be put to later use in the electron transport chain. The picture on this slide shows the reactants, the products, and the location of this chemical reaction. In addition, it provides a visual for how the process itself occurs and what these different molecules look like. The next stage in aerobic cell respiration is the Krebs cycle, which also takes place in the matrix of mitochondria. In this process, acetyl coenzyme A is broken down further to the point at which only carbon dioxide is left. Again, energy from the bonds in this molecule are used to convert NAD plus and FADH plus into FADH2 and NADH. Just like the previous two stages that were described, glycolysis and the formation of acetyl coenzyme A, the payoff from producing these molecules will be described later in the section on the electron transport chain. It's worth noting that in the Krebs cycle, in addition to producing NADH and FADH2, two ATP molecules are produced from two ADP molecules. The picture on this slide shows why the process is called the Krebs cycle. The process, summarized in nine steps with this picture, recycles many products and reactants in its cycle. Each step shows where and how the products and reactants come into play. The electron transport chain is the last series of events in aerobic respiration. In these steps, the cell caches in on the many products from other steps of cell respiration to produce a ton of energy in the form of ATP for the cell. The electron transport chain, just like the Krebs cycle and glycolysis that we talked about earlier, clearly looks a bit confusing. The general way that this process works, however, is that molecules produced during glycolysis, acetyl coenzyme A formation, and the Krebs cycle are put to use. NADH and FADH2 give off high-energy electrons that allow protons to be pumped across the inner main membrane of the mitochondrion against the concentration gradient, from an area of low concentration to an area of high concentration. This is a form of active transport. 
When there are a lot of more protons in the inner membrane space, which is the area between the inner and the outer membrane surrounding the mitochondria, shown in the top of this picture, protons want to diffuse back into the matrix of mitochondria. The pink protein that's shown on the right, called ATP synthase, allows this to happen. As the protons come back across into the mitochondrial matrix, the movement of protons adds a phosphate group to ADP molecules, forming ATP. The cell caches in on, so to speak, NADH and FADH2, each of which can be used to form two to three ATP molecules. By the time all is said and done, 34 ATP are produced in this process. As the text on the left shows, the reactants of this chemical process are 10 NADH, 2 FADH2, and 6 oxygen molecules, as well as 34 ADP molecules. The products of this process are 34 ATP molecules, 6 water molecules, and the remnants of NADH and FADH2, which are NAD+, and FADH+. Now we've gone through some of the most important steps of aerobic respiration. Glycolysis, the formation of acetyl coenzyme A, and the Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain. To take a look at the big picture, I'll try to go over things one last time, summing each step up in a sentence or two. Glycolysis is the first step of aerobic respiration, where glucose is broken in half into two pyruvate molecules, two ATP, and two NADH molecules. This process occurs in anaerobic respiration as well, and takes place in the cytosol. Formation of acetyl coenzyme A is the second step, where two pyruvate molecules are further broken down into two acetyl coenzyme A, and two more NADH molecules are produced. The Krebs cycle completely breaks down acetyl coenzyme A into carbon dioxide and produces two more ATP. Also, further stockpiled are six NADH and two FADH. Two. Finally, the electron transport chain is the final step where NADH and FADH2 are used to pump protons across the mitochondrial membrane, which can then be used to produce a ton of energy, 34 more ATP molecules. That is the end of this video discussing some of the most important stages of cellular respiration. If you are interested in watching any other videos pertaining to cell respiration or photosynthesis, or any other themes of biology, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.